Hello. All right. Um, I'm going to basically recap the same subject, the same uh, points that I was, uh, that I just made in the, in the last videos, uh, in the last video, but I'm going to come at it from a different, uh, from a different approach. I'm going to call this subject cosmic evolution. We can speak of evolution on the earth uh, and what we've learned so far and we can fairly um, uh, fairly securely fairly securely uh, assume that the way life comes about in certain ways not specific specific forms that have to do with gravity and the biology that's available in the biosphere but the forms that life take on uh, probably is something that is uh, that is spurred forward, for, spurred forth by other planets, by any other planet where there's the same situation of a, a sun heating the elements, the same elements that we find on all planets, and the the Goldilocks zone and all that stuff, and we can deduce without having verification yet, without actually having proven it, that there's probably uh, a lot of elements for which life will come about the same way. We also have another theorem that is uh, where life didn't, deserts, you know, that didn't have any, a whole host of plants and families and trees of, of, of different uh, families of life forms and plants did not exist, and um, life came and later evolved into things that uh, it evolved similarly on other continents without contracting, without uh, transmitting those life forms. So there, there is, even here on Earth, uh, hypotheses that would say life arises the same way. Okay, okay so another thing that we have to understand is that life... Um, Life comes forth, all living organism, con organisms, conscience, conscious, conscious life forms and plants, they come form, and if, if evolution had a mind, it would, it creates plurally first. It makes the collective. It doesn't start by an individual that later becomes a collective. Like, our, like what characterizes our, our logical analysis of, of life, no, we know, uh, in, in, in so far as ordering, and so this is this is all about order and getting uh, ideas properly ordered. So we understand that uh, evolution, life sends forth the collective. We understand that the first force, the the first, you know, uh, sought force or just given. But the first established force is um, is 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 the collective proliferation, the proliferation of the species as a whole. And then there's uh, we come into survival, survival uh, given the threats or the difficulties or the conditions of the planet, right? So the most important thing uh, is of course survival, and for that collective su to succeed appears uh, the reasoning or the logic or the intelligence that will have that organism in its own interest survive. So this is what they commonly call the competition of the species, right? It's because every mind, the, the mind of every species is thinking how to succeed. Now, that intelligence and in, in, in knowing how to succeed before the difficulty, the existential difficulty, is uh, very concentrated on the singular. So, for example, if you have a clan, that's why you get the, the bright ideas of a single leader uh, that starts off, and so the, the starting premise is to have the collective succeed, because that's the prime directive of uh, the emergence of life, but the, the, the concentration, the sharpness, the angularity, the, the uh, specificity, the, um, the point is that really looking at things and breaking them down into analysis and figuring out how things work, this kind of intelligence gets concentrated on individuals. So 
the human species, like all animals, are basically defined uh, by these two prerogatives or, or prime directives of life. What we haven't really um, ordered properly, for example, in politics, uh, is that first comes the is for the success of the species, which means the individual, of course, the collective must be whole and healthy, and so that it proliferates as an entity, as an, a complete entity forward. And we use through uh, in the individual nature intelligence of within the species of, of the millions of of individuals that are in that species a individualized intelligence to create more specific precise logic um, so what we're seeing if you look if you go back and look at the way we have been uh, running the world what is obvious is that um, socialism Marxism is a sort of an evolutionary step of intellectualism that understands that um, singularity thinking or individualist thinking concentrated on the chief on the leader on the king uh, on cap on the power bestowed to the few through capitalism ends up creating a uh, disproportion unbalance. It doesn't really take care of the whole of the species. It was never proposed as such, but it does, uh, basically its premise is one of pl uh, plural, pluralism. So uh, social uh, togetherness and equality and distribution. And so it expresses that part of the uh, of the dis of the of the need or the desire of the human species, whereas capitalism and sort of you know and everything that has to do with the, the systems of financing or or the structures of, of running a country expresses the part that is the mechanized the the instrument the machinery of logic of of, of a survival strategy. And so, the problem is that, as an intelligence in itself, it, it is not uh, as big enough. It's not big enough to have the the purpose of evolution or the collective species succeed. In fact, we see that all countries, all political systems, have failed throughout all of history, and that it always creates a mass of people uh, that are poor, that are used, that are enslaved, and then there's a concentration at the head of government, no matter what government you're talking about. We always do the same thing. We have all sorts of explanations for why this came, which of course blame the nature of mankind and blah, 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 and a bunch of reasons. But in reality, it's because we have never really, really understood that the intelligence of a political uh, philosophy or the intelligence of a government needs to prioritize moving the whole collective first together and so for everything that our precocious and smart sharp intelligence invents agriculture instruments technologies of communication and everything that are this we have to we would have to think immediately okay now so that for that everybody for so that everybody um, accesses it or uh, receives it in equal amounts to each individual. This is a concept. It's not. It's not a political party. It's not being a communist or anything. It's a way of thinking about administration and governance of a people of a country. And so, if that, it's it's about order. In other words, it's about ordering as evolution or life on planets would have it. If um, if evolution on the planet Earth had said, okay, now it's time to create a government, we would have never seen it all of a sudden forget two-thirds of its people in poverty or slavery or ob oblivion, you know. It, it would have maintained, like we see, all trees are pretty much the same height, all creatures eat fairly well, you know, there's 
some failings or shortcomings of nature as it is not uh, an instrument it is not cut with with a exacto knife and and a, and and the precision of of industry but it would not have resulted in what we have done with leading uh, governance and the, the intelligent logic of nation creation and government creation with our logical, skillful intelligence, which is meant to survive, but it means to, it means to have survived the collective through the success of the individual because it's an individually natured intelligence. It's, uh, it's the acute observance of two eyes, two ears, uh, one one single place of reasoning process it's by nature individualistic and so if we uh, if one person generates the logic of uh, uh, the, uh, or an analysis and the design for a government and it doesn't establish the the notion as a priority that I am limited because I am one thinking of this I have to therefore make a conscious, concerted effort that all my ideas are going to grab everybody and not result in anybody being left out. That would be, that would have been, that should have been the premise on which all political parties, philosophies, governments, and ways of administrating a people or a nation were designed. We're remembering that because the person that is thinking at that time is an individual, unless we, we got together a whole collective of people and we all started talking together and making sure that, uh, you know, that the conversation that was being had always kept everybody included and never left anybody out, um, perhaps that would have been a way that we would have been, come closer. But we don't need to do that. We can just design political systems that understand our, the fallacy or the shortcoming of our own human nature and how we're made. We're made by uh, two, two sort of priorities. The priority to succeed and survive and overcome difficulty, toiling, suffering, which is an acute, sharp, pushing, uh, uh, sort of like a, an, arrow, an arrowhead, you know, a spearhead, um, concentrate type of intelligence which we have always used to govern or to administrate collectively. We have never realized that there was a, in, a discrepancy in, 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 uh, in, in, the, in the overall goal of the living life form uh, created by evolution or cosmic evolution. We have never said, but since it is uh, the one that's speaking is an individual, it, it, we're, uh, the one that's speaking is not speaking as a collective, as evolution could if it had a voice and a brain <laughs> and a language. I have to design, I have to design, I have to think in terms of making sure that the collective, that the whole stays together and that there are no imbalances and people cut out, left out, forgotten, left behind, or is more difficult or for any, you know, that I think in terms of. So this is where Marxism is actually born, although it was never probably presented this way. But basically, it's mankind, humankind, that's evolving in its in its political understanding of of its world, of the countries that it creates, and it got to a point where it started because at the same time there were sciences and biology and uh, I think. Um, Darwin and it's interesting. It's interesting to understand the society of the time and how uh, the the flow between Darwinian and all the people that were studying the sciences and ecology was starting to brew uh, then, um, and Marxism and the pluralistic philosophies of, of politics and governance were also being turned because something was happening. We were starting to to see uh, things in a broader way. But unfortunately, we've never seen that it was an evolutionary step of sorts or trying to, uh, try, starting to open up, starting to push the, the eggshell open and realize, whoop, we have a problem here. Oops, <laughs> we have a problem. Our thinking is individually based because it's reasoned by the individual human being. And so all our ideas are, are uh, 
not not mean spirited or or inadequate or any way, but by nature, by nature, by, by an unseen um, contextual configuration, never able to be detected, we will produce something that ends up failing the collective, because we're not thinking as a warm, warm collective like the big. Alex or the big, you know, we, we fantasize about it. We make science fiction movies and where the collective has an intelligence and, and Big Brother or whatever. It's, it's almost like we're trying, we're slowly pushing towards that. Well, we could, we could stop trying and, and failing and realize what the, the paradigm is, what, what is actually happening. And in a sense, um, this opposition that is, that is uh, spread all over the, the world uh, is expressing that is expressing the 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 plural socially caring mind and the success and escape the toiling and suffering through instruments and inventions political mind um, those two parts of the single species uh, have embodied themselves in political philosophies and parties and forms of governments and, and they think that they're too uh, two racers put against each other, and no, they're just expressions of the human mind. And so it would behoove us to reconcile what is happening there and start thinking in terms of benefiting and, and becoming uh, the, the species and the nation as a whole and becoming really versatile and flexible uh, in, in saying, we can just let go of all that and just do it completely different. And how about if we try this? Well, let's try something new or let's rethink the whole thing let's understand the human being, understand natural redemption, that people don't actually want to be criminals, they actually don't want to kill people. Deep, deep down inside, we all want to belong first. That's the prime thing. We want to stay together as a collective. So if you go to the first desire of, of, the, of the living form, it is to not hurt another, to not uh, hurt society, and, and for there to not be criminality and robbery and theft. It happens, I'm going to get into why, how it happens, but we would be all the wiser to understand that we would it'd be a lot easier, actually, a lot easier for institutions and for nations to try to configure, to form, to help, to support the natural dynamics that are already capable by the human mind. And so, if a person doesn't really want to be different, a criminal, go get, get hurt anyone, or, or be unliked by the rest of, of society, then we would create ways by which it could find its way back. And, and we do that. We have, people have uh, spoken up in recovery and rehabilitation and uh, re returning people to society, but we don't, we're not very clear about it. We don't know. It's like a good idea that nobody listens to. And so we need to really tell the whole, tell, explain the full picture so we can finally start designing institutions that uh, favor the, the better workings of nature, which are, uh, for example, that people want to catch up and want to belong again. And so maybe they need education. They need to feel, we know this stuff. We know they need to feel better about themselves and build morale and, and build appreciation, and, and there are tons of ways that we can do this. We're not lacking people that are this wise and this understanding of human nature and what would be better for a judicial institution, for a, for a institution that took care of, of people who, who could not get on board with, with the mass of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of um, whatever intelligent uh, form of civilization, you know. Okay, so that's it. Just wanted to add that. I'm looking for the right number to stop it at. Let's do it right there.